All right, I'm going to QC our first box of the Acula uh, SARS-CoV-2 PCR test. It's clear wave, so we don't have to do any kind of API samples on it. Um, I'm not gonna show you a patient sample because each of these cartridges are $55 and I don't wanna waste any. So I'm gonna show you how to QC it and it's the same exact way for a patient sample. Uh, the QC comes with three, we're used to having two, but now we have three. There is a, um, a low positive, a high positive and a negative so you have to do all three um i don't think it matters um if you do positive or negative first like it is on the sophia but just um i'm just going to do the positive first so i'm going to start with the high positive what you'll do is you will open your cassette package up this is what it looks like it comes with the, the cassette and a small transfer pipette <clears throat> you'll grab a buffer tube probably should be wearing gloves for this wear gloves for a patient sample You'll have your nasal swab patient sample. Um, it'll just be nasal, not nasopharyngeal. You'll place it inside the buffer, swish it around. I think it says five times, but just get a good swish in there. Maybe squeeze it out a little bit like we do with the other types of tests we do. Swish it around. Just make sure it gets in there really good. And then we will discard this. Place this back on top. Invert it a couple of times. It doesn't say that you need to let it sit for um, any period of time, just do it. Um, this can be at room temperature for two hours. Next thing you'll do is you'll open this up. Um, when you plug it in, it'll check the temperature of the ambient air. Um, the way this works is, is by heating the samples in, in different levels, and that's the way it extracts the RNA to make it PCR. So you'll insert it. it. It says don't close this before you put your sample in because it'll run this without your sample and you've just wasted a cartridge, so don't do that. So I've got my sample here, uh, inverted a couple of times. We'll open it back up. We'll get our small transfer pipette, stick it in, do one squeeze, draw your solution up, recap it. After this seal is broken here, you have five minutes to add your sample. So just try to do it as quickly as you can. And then you will put your sample inside. So you feel resistance and then squeeze just this bulb, not this bulb. Um, it says sample loaded, close lid. So we'll take this out, this card, and then we will close the lid. Because that's sealed and then it sets a timer for 30 minutes. When this is done, this will not read the results to you. This is not a reader like our other machines are. It actually processes the test. So when it comes out, you will have to read the results, which are here. I'll laminate this so it looks really nice. Um, when you're doing the QC, um, I have it on the QC paper. There's a positive control and a negative control. So you see, and then NC, and this is the test line. So this will be laminated and in the box just for a quick reference how to interpret the results. Um, but when it comes out, it'll It'll show show this is like a wick, and uh, okay, so now it's making some noise. So now it's running the test. First, it was sealing the package, and it's running the test. Um, and I'll link some YouTube links on on this as well. But this will be in there how to interpret the results, and then this only tests COVID two, uh, SARS COVID two, um, and then here's a quick reference of everything that I just said. All right, it's time to read the results. So we will just pop this open, push that button, pop it open, and pull it out. So remember, this was our high positive. So we have no line on the negative control, which is the NC. We have a positive line on the test control, and then or the test line, and then the regular positive control, there's a line. So from the top to the bottom, positive control is positive, test is positive, negative control is not there. So this is a good test. Um, we can read it, result it, document it in the, uh, the POC binder. Okay, just a few more things and I promise I'll be done. This is the box that it comes in. Um, the QC material is in the box, just like all of our other point of care tests. Um, the lot number, if the next box has the same lot number, you don't have to QC it. Just you QC that lot number, doesn't matter how many boxes it is. Technically, if it's a different shipment, you're supposed to re-QC the box, but there's no way of them actually ever finding that out. So um, do it just like we do all the other POC tests. So that lot number is QC'd 15 boxes after it's gonna be QC'd as long as it's within the expiration date. Um, let me open the box. I'm actually probably also gonna store this and the base inside here. Um, I'm gonna store it up there. Anyway, so when you open the box, here's the buffers. The swabs that we use are just regular cotton tipped. Um, this is what we also have in our um, drawers in the patient rooms. So it's just a plain cotton tipped. It's not the strep swab, the strep swab is rayon tipped. Um, I know cotton and rayon are almost the same thing, but just, just use these. It comes with a couple extra pipettes. I wrote that on there um, in case you drop one there's only two extras in there and then also it comes with the cassette the cassette has um this package also has the a pipette in there so just use them as you, as you go okay so that's the box and then here is the uh, qc log it's a little different than all the other ones that we do because you have to document a positive internal qc and a negative internal qc and we talked about that earlier um, in the other video but you'll see it has c t and then nc the negative control so you have to um, do present not present i bold 
I put the ones that is normal in bold. So a positive QC, you're supposed to see the line, so it will be present. And then the negative IQC, you're supposed to validate that there, the line is not present. If the negative QC line is there, if it's present, then the test is invalid. So you have to document that on all three, the high, the low, and the negative. Yep, so that's how, that's how you do that one. So you gotta make sure you circle these that are in bold. This test has been added to LabDAC. Um, I do suggest that if you run this, don't run it on the same requisition as other tests. It needs to be by itself, its own requisition, um, because it's going to have that big PCR description in with it um, that we have to use for BioFire. So just keep this on a separate requisition than other tests, if there are other tests that are ordered. Okay, last video, I promise. This is the competency verification form you're going to fill out once you finish watching this video and the other training videos that are attached to the email that Annie's going to send you. Um, please reply to the email saying that it's done, um, just so that I can, you know, check my boxes off too. Um, but fill this out. I'm going to have this pre-filled out because this is your verbal review. Um, and actually it's an observation too, but we're just going to put verbal review. Um, and I'm going to have it signed. You just sign here and date both of these. This form, oh and put your name up here too. Um, this form is going to be in this drawer. When you get done with it, just stick it back in there and I'll figure it out later. Okay, any questions, let me know.